first I needed to know, have a sense of uh, the types of couches or sofas. And, you know, I realized there are one, two and three uh, configurations over here or types. So that was how I started uh, doing uh, previous research. Uh, after that, what I did is, okay, I know now the types of coaches, but hey, what about how they fit on each living room configuration? So then over here, I started to uh, research some floor plans for residential in this case, and kind of put them together and find out some patterns some repeat patterns right that i can use on my dynamic blocks so i can cover uh, all of the configurations for my client finally i needed the final uh, information and it was about the sizes uh, because you don't want to randomly create sizes that doesn't exist in the market that would be a big mistake so i found out the different sizes uh, for couches or uh, sofas and as you can see here they are so at this point I created a blog using the B shortcut on my keyboard and I uh, started naming my blog of course um, I'll rename it uh, such as lazy couch or you can call it sofa uh, some people know them so yeah so I proceeded to say okay over here and then I selected my base point my base point, um, of course, needed to be an, a strategic uh, base point. So that way I can quickly insert it and place it on my living rooms, right? So my base point, I located it over here on the central piece on the midpoint. So now I sometimes uh, or most of the times we need to leave a gap over here from the wall. So. That's why I place it my base point from the midpoint and I moved it up. So by using my snapping reference line, so I hover over it and move it up about two inches and press enter. So that way I have, oops, I have this geometry and all of this, I can erase it of course, because I don't need that one. So that's my a one piece coach very simple so from this uh, right now this is a static block it's not a dynamic block yet it's simply a static block uh, following some um, block standards of course uh, make sure that the layer is layer zero and it's by layer on the color so make sure that's uh, correct so at this point the first thing that I did was, so let me of course close these uh, two palettes so we don't get confused. The first thing is to use the authoring palette from the uh, block editor ribbon. So if you don't see it on your screen, it's over here, authoring palette. So once you expand that out, what I did is start adding some parameters, some actions so the first parameter that i added it was the linear parameter so i selected the linear parameter and of course uh, following the instructions as specify star point so i did that and i did it over here on this point so click on it and then finally over here on this other point so i'll click on it and then i moved it down like so so of course there was an exclamation mark, but I knew what was going on. It simply, this simply means that it's missing an action, this parameter. So that's not a problem. We're gonna add an action, but before we needed to simplify this parameter, I only needed one grip instead of two. So that's not a problem. I went to my property palette. So by simply open it, right? With the PR shortcut, like so. And once I selected my parameter and went down to my properties, I could change the number of grips to uh, one, like so. So let's uh, now, I was ready to, of course, add the action. So the action was the, the stretch action, which is right here, stretch. So once I click that, uh, following the instructions, of course, I needed to select my parameter. This is the parameter I need. And then I needed also to specify the parameter point. 
the parameter point would be over here so i'll simply click on it and then i needed to specify my stretch also so my stretch action would be over there and finally my objects would be all of these objects but i needed to deselect uh, the line that was over here so how i did it was simply uh, holding the shift key so you need to hold the shift and then i will deselect the line like so so i'm gonna click there and that way i deselect a line that it's over here on this part so i can simply press, press uh, enter right now and as you can see we added it, the stretch action over here let's test so far what we did because that's a good practice when creating dynamic blocks we don't want to simply start adding actions parameters and then in the end find out that we did something wrong and then we need to figure it out where is the mistake so that's why we need to test the block here from the ribbon and then let's see what we did so over here we can see we have a, a stretch parameter over here so if i stretch that out uh, you can see that that's work that is working nicely as you can see right so and now let's start adding um, some more actions or parameters in this case the array so let's close the block uh, test editor and let's see over here okay so now let's add a another uh, parameter or action in this case the array but before if you see sometimes that everything is showing uh, highlighted and uh, we, we can regenerate simply our drawing so that way our lines uh, show up correctly so as you can see uh, the important part here is that we have our geometry in a way that oops again is showing uh, highlighted I'm gonna regenerate so we have one line over here this is a single line and we we needed another line over here so that we don't have right now so let me draw it in order to array it right so i'm gonna draw a line with the l shortcut and press enter and i'm gonna draw my line from this point to this point click like so and then i'm gonna press enter so that line is very important because we're going to array that line. All right. So let's continue then with the next action. So the next action is going to be the array, as I was mentioning. So let's select that. And following the instructions, uh, how I did it was, of course, select the parameter. I'm going to select this parameter and select objects. Uh, the array that I need or the object that I need is only the single line. So how I'm gonna select it is clicking over here and using the, the cross the windows. So I'm gonna click like that. So that way I don't select my geometry, only the line in the middle. So I'm gonna press enter. And then finally, uh, it asks me to uh, specify a distance. So my distance would be, of course, um, I can select two points, this point and also this point over here so that's my distance so so far uh, we added it an array so let's see how it looks by testing our block so uh, let's select it and let's see how this is working so as you can see uh, the array is adding the extra line over here every uh, two feet as you can see but it is not working or behaving the way that we want in reality we will never find a coach or sofa a couch or sofa like this so we needed uh, something that uh, a way to uh, restrict this to only show a two feet increment so let's fix that by closing the blog editor that's not a problem what we need to do is change this uh, distance uh, one uh, parameter and going over here under the property what we need is an option that says distance type so the distance type there are three uh, two different ones but the one that we need is called list 
So once we select that list, we can add more values by clicking this icon. And then I can specify a value of, uh, let's say, four feet, right? And simply add that value. And then finally, six feet. And again, add that value. So at this point, I can click OK. And you can see that two lines were added over here that represents uh, how our array is going to work. So let's quickly test it now. So let's test the block and let's see how this block is behaving. So let's change that. Okay, nice. And here we go. Nice. So of course I wanted to restrict it because uh, the uh, most used couch is, you know, one, two and three. So, but you can add it um, as you wish. But again, I wanted to simplify my client's life to give them the options that he only will need. All right. So, so far we are good over here with the parameter uh, stretch and the um, array actions, but we still see a problem over here. The problem is that these, um, the point for our base point is not moving accordingly. So this will give us a problem because whenever we insert our block, I wanted to keep this base point centered with my block. So that's not a problem. How I did it is, of course, I closed the test block. And what I did is how I solved this problem was um, simply adding a base point parameter, right? From my block authoring palette. So I selected, of course, and then I placed it. And so uh, how I placed it is, of course, uh, from my midpoint, I move it up uh, two inches, so, like so. And that was my base point over there. Now, I needed it to associate this uh, base point parameter with my uh, stretch. So, so let's see if I can uh, stretch it and let's see what happens. So to modify a parameter or include a new item, like this one, I could simply right click and say modify selection set to include this uh, new base point parameter. But a simpler way uh, was to use another action, in this case, the move action. So that way I can move my base point according, accordingly, right? So. That, let's do that so the action would be move again so following the instructions what i did is of course select my parameter so that's the parameter that we're using so let's click on it and then of course following the instructions says specify the point associated so the point would be over here and then my objects to move in this case would be the uh, base point parameter. So let's click that out. And finally, I did press enter. So, so far, that's my move parameter. So let's test it really quick from the test block option. And let's see uh, how this is working. So you can see that uh, we did something, but not uh, the, <laughs> not, it's not working uh, actually 100%, but you can see that now we have this base point parameter that it's moving in a weird manner, but uh, let's fix that. That's not a problem. We want, again, to have our base point centered always with our couch. So let's close the block editor. So the way I fixed this uh, small problem or issue was by selecting the move action that it's uh, only working on this base point so and then going to our property so right now the distance multiplier is one but one would be if we are moving our base point according to this but we need half because we wanted to keep it half so the way it's of course do it one over two and pressing enter so that will give us a 0.5 or 0.50 so let's quickly test now our block again. So from the block test block editor. So let's start changing our configuration and boom, as you can see, our base point will always keep centered with our block. So 
at this point so the final piece that we needed uh, was adding uh, our two tables over here so let's quickly do that and let's close this block editor and so the final touches of course again would be um, adding the two tables and then uh, adding the alignment parameter so let's first add the alignment parameter so the alignment parameter it's over here under uh, the parameters option so the alignment parameter will help us to uh, again align quickly uh, with any wall uh, so that way you don't need to rotate manually your blocks so let's do that alignment is over here let's select it and following instructions of course we needed to specify the base point first so our base point would be uh, from here two inches up right Two inches and present so it's right there and finally following the instruction says specify alignment direction so it would be over here to the right and click like so all right now uh, let's not forget that the same way we uh, move our base point every time we stretch this we also need to move our alignment parameter in the same way so that's not a problem we can include that in our move action so let's select that and right click and then over here we can say modify selection set once we do that make sure is select objects to add is the option because we want to add our alignment so let's select this part as well as the icon over here those two items and let's press enter all right so we included our alignment parameter to the move action so that way it can keep center let's test it so far so again that's the alignment parameter and let's keep arrange um, changing the configurations and again if you don't remember this would be so that when you insert your block right it could align automatically with the wall like this or like this all right so yep so let's close that out because it's working nicely as you can see it's keeping centered so let's close that out and the final touch would be the two the tables on the sides so let's quickly do that by using the rectangle command so and of course i'm gonna place it anywhere right now uh, with a dimension option of uh, about 18 inches which is the standard size so 18 inches by 18 inches so that's our table so uh, how i like to place it is centered so i'm going to simply move it from the center point over here like so and then move it again about two inches so that's a personal preference again and then i'm going to mirror this to the side using the mirror command nothing fancy at this point i'm simply mirroring this and have it in the side like so so let's quickly test it um so let's see what else we need so if we start a uh, range you can see that we don't have a problem here but we do have a problem with this other table so we want this to move according to our stretch um, action or parameter so let's quickly fix that out let's close our test block and what we needed to do is of course include our stretch action to also uh, be stretching or moving this table over here so let's do that so i'm gonna select this stretch and right click on it and say modify selection set so at this point specify first corner of a stretch i'm gonna specify all of this and then select objects to add yes i want to add an object in this case is this table so i'm gonna select that out and press enter all right so let's uh, quickly test this again to see that if it's working now so let's change that out and yes indeed it's working very nicely right so our alignment parameter and base point are moving center with the array as well as our dining tables so we can close this up 
and yes so now to do the other procedure so what i'm gonna do is select my couch over here i'm gonna select it and i'm gonna simply copy that we've gone with the copy command i'm gonna copy to the side like so all right so i'm gonna copy that out and simply rotate it and like so so now i need to place this so again this is a personal preference but i'm gonna place it over here and then i'm gonna move it about 12 inches down like so so now of course i need to apply the same steps basically um, but i'm just giving you um uh, showing you how you can do it right same steps apply a linear parameter over here add another stretch action and so on it's basically the same thing but the new thing that you need to know is the visibility state so for the visibility state is uh, over here under the parameter tab so let's select that visibility and over here we need to specify our location so our location a strategic one would be over here in this corner so that way um, all of our icons are on a nice location so it's more efficient to pick them so over here again we know that when there is an exclamation it means it's missing something so what it's missing is over here from the ribbon we can add some visibility states so let's click that out so let's click on it and over here uh, we only have one so far so let's rename that and say something like one couch a couch and then we can also add one more in this case make sure you leave the visibility of existing objects unchanged that's very important so over here i'm gonna say two couches click ok and finally add one more with uh, three couches and so on so you got the idea so i'm gonna uh, click ok so then the final step is to hide or show some of our geometry in this case if i go to one couch of course i wouldn't want to be this showing so i can hide it over here from the ribbon and say make this invisible like so so that's the one couch configuration if we change to two couch configuration we will see these two and you will apply the same steps to do a three couch configuration so let's quickly test this and as you can see it's working uh, nicely and let's change this and to couch so now the final piece is how we can keep this side uh, align with this uh, other couch while we stretch so let's quickly finalize that part so let's close this and the way we do it is adding a move uh, action so let's add that so let's go to uh, actions move following instructions select parameter my parameter is this one over here and then my point associated is this one over here and my objects will be all of these objects so i can press enter and then so that's the new move action that we just added it so let's quickly test that out so let's test the block let's change to a two couch option and let's see how this is working and yes it's working nicely as you can see we're keeping the same location according to our uh, other couch which is nice all right so i think this is this dynamic block is ready so again you can do the same procedure for the other side uh, to have the three couch configuration once you do that let's close the block editor and save the changes The block techniques were effective, but the trick I'll share using this bed will transform your workflow.